Hi everybody, Zach Collins here with Scorpion Racing Products. Today I want to take a couple minutes to explain to you the differences between a pedestal mount, stud mount, and shaft mount configurations of rocker arm systems. The first rocker configuration I want to explain is the pedestal mount configuration. A lot of the late model pushrod V8 cylinder heads and some inline six cylinder heads as well come with pedestal mount rockers. A uh, pedestal mount rocker is a rocker that actually sits on a pedestal on top of the cylinder head. So you'll have a pedestal that is actually separate from the rocker assembly itself that sits down on the cylinder head and then has a bolt go through the trunnion of the rocker arm and down into the cylinder head and threads into the cylinder head. So that's how the rocker arm is actually attached to the cylinder head. That's why it's called a pedestal mount because it mounts on top of a pedestal. Some of the stock cylinder heads come with a pedestal precast and machined into the cylinder head so there's no need for an additional separate pedestal. Depending on the application, an example the LS7 GM head that I have here. The pedestal mount configuration cannot take as much spring load and as much stress as a stud mount or shaft mount configuration, but it is good for a stock replacement, less aggressive application, mostly hydraulic roller camshafts, spring pressures less than 400 to 450 pounds of open spring pressure, and anything that's running on the street with a mild to mildly aggressive camshaft application. The second rocker configuration I'd like to explain is a stud mounted configuration. Uh, as the name implies, it is stud mounted, so there's a stud that has threads on both ends that mates to the cylinder head and then the rocker arm attaches to on the top side. So you have a stud with threads on both sides, one thread threads into the cylinder head, and then the other side has a stepped shoulder, so it's got a smooth shank and a smooth shoulder and then threads on the top. So the smooth portion of the stud is actually where the rocker arm slides over and the trunnion mates to it. So that way it's actually tight, doesn't have a lot of wiggle room and it's not just on a thread. Now to fasten this to the cylinder head and set the rocker where it needs to be, whether you're setting preload on a hydraulic roller cam or hydraulic flat tappet, or you're setting valve lash on a solid or mechanical roller or flat tappet, you have what we call a poly lock, which threads down onto the top of the stud and then it has an internal set screw that you're able to lock onto the top of the stud once you set your preload or once you actually set your valve lash and lock it in place. So on the cylinder head itself, you'll see over here that we already have a pushrod guide plate installed underneath the stud. This stud's already been torqued down and then we have the valve and the spring here. So you'll see the rocker, if there was an assembled engine here, there'd be a pushrod coming up into this guide plate and you just slide the rocker over the stud and then the actual roller side mace with the valve and this is where your push rod would be coming up. And then this is where you would either snug the poly lock down to your point of zero lash, where the push rod has no up and down movement for setting your preload. And then from there you would do your number of turns that you would need, whether it be a half, one full turn, one and a half turns, all different depending on the application. Or you would have a feeler gauge between the roller tip and the valve tip where you would actually set your lash on a mechanical cam. Uh, some of the stock cylinder heads that come from the factory with studs don't have screw in studs. They have press end studs. So instead of having threads on both sides of the stud, the cylinder head portion of the stud would actually just be a straight shank and it would have a press fit into a hole in the cylinder head. Uh, those are uh, weaker and they can't take as much force and as much stress and load as a screw in stud because you're able to distribute that entire load over this thread. That's a lot of surface area versus just the press fit into the cylinder head. So normal recommendation is to go ahead and remove those press in studs and go ahead and drill and tap the cylinder head for screw in studs. So that's your stud mounted configuration. The third and final rocker configuration is a shaft mounted rocker configuration. A shaft mount system has two rockers, a rocker pair mounted on a shaft which bolts to a stand that is bolted to the cylinder head as opposed to using a bolt like a pedestal mount or a stud like a stud mounted rocker arm. So the benefits of this uh, is a one piece stand or individual stands for each cylinder. Uh, and this has a flat bottom that's perfectly flat, machine flat, to be able to mate to the cylinder head and then has our standard bolts that go through these slotted holes that bolt into the same holes in the cylinder head where the studs or the, or the bolts for the pedestal mount would screw into in those other configurations. Uh, in addition to the stand, you have a standard rocker pair that's pre-assembled on a shaft and it sits in this groove saddle here on the stand and then you have three bolts per shaft that bolt the shaft to the rocker stand itself. With that, you also have shims 
that come with the kit that go underneath the stand to set your stand height and your rocker geometry correctly. And then you also have the bolts that are 5 16 18 to bolt through the shafts into the stand. The benefits of the shaft mounted configuration over the stud mount or pedestal mount configuration are that you have one solid piece with all eight fasteners clamping it to the cylinder head and you have three fasteners per pair of rockers as opposed to one fastener per rocker that you would in a stud mount or pedestal mount configuration. So you have more clamping force and you have more load that say you have the same amount of load able to be distributed over a larger area which equates to a more rigid system at high RPM. It's able to take higher spring pressures, higher RPM, more aggressive camshaft profiles, and also power adders, nitrous oxide, turbochargers, superchargers, extreme compression ratios, extreme cylinder pressures. The shaft mount is definitely second to none in those areas. In addition to the standard shaft mount configuration, which comes with a needle roller bearing, we also offer a solid bronze bushing upgrade option, and we also offer pressure fed oiling. This is the standard configuration where the adjuster just has a through hole, just like the conventional oiling, would oil up the push rod and then have the splash oiling as the rocker oscillates and would spray everything under the valve cover and keep it wet. Now, in, in addition to that, we also offer valve spring oiling where a small hole would be drilled on the underside of the nose of the rocker arm and that would allow a jet of oil sprayed directly onto the valve spring and the retainer and the roller and valve tip interface during operation to keep the spring cooler and extend your valve spring life in endurance applications where you're running at high RPM for extended period of time where you may get heat soaked. In addition to that, we offer a pressure fed adjuster as well with a cross hole and oil band in it that captures all the oil from the push rod and forces it to go through an oil circuit in the body, directly feeding the bushing or bearing with pressure fed oil, and then also feeding the valve spring oiling circuit with that same pressure fed oil. The shaft mount configuration is available for small block and big block Ford, small block, big block Chevy, and LS applications. And depending on the cylinder head, you may need to machine the cylinder head to, be allow, to allow it to fit the shaft mount configuration, or most aftermarket heads come pre-machined, ready to bolt on. So those are the three different rocker mounting styles that Scorpion Racing Products offers. If you have any additional questions or information that you need, you can visit our website at www.scorpionracingproducts.com, or you can feel free to call our tech line at 352-512-0800, and we'd be more than happy to help you.